On today's episode, we are going to take a look at three stocks that I believe are a great buy for me right now. And the reason I say this is because I actually just purchased them. So the three stocks I purchased today are in different sectors. One is going to be a software company. The next is going to be one in the gaming industry. And the third one is going to be one in the food industry. And I believe that might surprise a lot of people because the food industry, uh, I, I feel like most of my viewers believe I only invest in test tech stocks. Um, but it's pretty funny my biggest winner right now is celsius it's one of the and that's not the company we're going to take a look at today but one of my biggest winners is celsius it's been up over 200 i think almost 200 percent since i first talked about it in this channel like always if you're new to the channel make sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the thumbs up it helps the channel out so much and i truly truly appreciate it my name's jose naharo by day i'm a senior electrical engineer but by night i'm a self-taught investor looking for new investments to hold for long-term gains and you guys should also check out the merch down below while you're down there don't forget to go to the comments and let me know what are some of the stocks you purchased this week it's great to share with the community while you're down there you should also see a link to my discord channel is free to anybody that wants to join and i post every time i buy a stock and every time i sell like i said it's free and we have over a thousand members right now also while you're down there you should see a link to webo if you sign up and follow th that rule we both get a free stock sometimes they even do specials where we might get more than one free stock and finally i am not a professional so none of this should be taken as advice all right, so the first company we're going to take a look at is Autodesk. This is ticker ADSK. This is one I've actually been adding at least once every month for like, I want to say the past two to three months. I am very bullish in this company. Right now, after hours, it's sitting at $2, at $258, up 5%. And that's pretty insane because I got in today at two, uh, around the $245. So already great gains in there um, since I purchased right now market cap is sitting after this after this up price is sitting at 56.6 billion dollars i do believe for a software company that's in this market which we're going to see in a bit is still very very cheap and i i can see this one being a multi-bagger for me in the next two to three years year to date returns are about 38 percent and right now with its with its new uh after hour prices is about one to two percent down from its all-time high so it definitely pulled back a nice amount but after hours today it is pulling back regardless i still believe this is a great buy for me so now let's take a quick look at what autodesk does so autodesk is a software that is used by creators um from everywhere from architectures to engineers to media the media company and it's pretty much a 3d modeling a 3d mo modeling software so let's say if you want to build a phone if you want to build the phone and you're drawing the 3d models you threw it to, you threw it to one of autodesk programs you can do it also for um, skyscrapers and they actually have one for animation so it's being used in the media world as well all right so next let's take a quick look at the revenue breakdown to see where things are coming from so in their most recent earnings which was quarter two of 2021 i believe this ended june 30th they showed you their they, they have four major sectors first is their biggest sector is aec and that's architecture engineering and construction so when you use their 3d modeling softwares to create buildings to work on the electrical aspect of the building and for architectures to make homes right that makes 397 million this most recent quarter and that was up 20 percent compared to the same time last year right? and this is pretty insane because quarter two was one of the biggest um quarters affected due to COVID 19 so it's still impressive to see these types of numbers coming in the second biggest is autocad and autocad lt this is more like their basic their basic software that is used for almost anything and this is 272 million and this is up 18 percent compared to the same time last year then we have this orange one which is manufacturing that is up six percent compared to the same time last year and then we have the smallest which is media and entertainment if you say you want to build a cartoon you want to make animations you use it using it using this software from autodesk and that only makes 59 million it's a very small portion of the total revenue probably a little bit less than 10 percent but that is up four percent compared to the same time last year we can see the two major sectors are up double digits almost 
20 percent and that's that's pretty impressive and now let's take a look at the future of growth what am i so excited about autodesk so autodesk one thing we can see is they are profitable already and they're continuing to gain those profits as the years go on and we can see this huge gain in revenue so autodesk is expected to grow its revenue 14 percent on average annually for the next three to five years and that to me is a, a, a strong growth anything growing at 15 percent i consider a growth stock anything growing over a hyper growth stock this is right around that 15 percent it is profitable and their earnings are going to continue to grow as well so this makes it one of my favorite companies to look at now let's take a look at their balance sheet so balance sheet for autodesk is also pretty nice in their most recent earnings they told us that they had about two billion dollars in non-current debt they pretty much had um, almost nothing in current debt 53 million so in reality they have about 2.08 billion dollars in non-current debt but look they have enough deferred revenue to pretty much pay off their total debt liabilities and that to me is pretty impressive they also have a nice amount of cash and cash equivalents about 1.44 billion dollars they are profitable they have free um, they have cash flow from operations that are positive so they I, I don't think they need to have a strong balance sheet since they have cash flow coming in but they have all that plus a strong balance sheet to pretty much be able to control all their total debt so this is a definitely a strong balance sheet for me now the final thing i want to take a look at is just this company's technical analysis as a long-term investor technicals is usually the last thing i look at when entering a position but when i am trying to add into a position i do search for two things the first thing i'm searching is it overstretch has it are right now are we right now too high compared to the averages that i look at and the second thing i look at is where am i seeing huge volumes and those are the two things we're going to see right now so the first thing with autodesk is no it is not overextended um, we can see this is what i call overextended at this price right here where it's way above its averages and what normally ends up happening is it ends up pulling back to to its averages again this does not always happen and that's why when opening a position i don't really care about technicals but when adding into a position since i have a lot of positions i'm able to find different companies that are not overextended right now next i'm looking for huge volume so i use this technical volume profile vpvr and here i can see a strong amount of volume is coming between the 226 dollars and 250 dollars so for me i wouldn't mind buying at any of those levels between that range is a place where i don't mind adding so what do i like about autodesk the first thing we saw it is not overextended from its stock price right now that's a great thing second thing is it is sitting at these levels where there are a nice amount of volume within these stock prices so that tells me that there is some support layer i'm also very bullish in the market they're in the overall this is more like creating market for for engineers architects and engineering are always going to develop something architectures are always developing new buildings construction is always happening and they are also in the manufacturing and media entertainment the media entertainment is one that's very small but i wish will continue to grow um their revenue growth they are we saw their revenue growth this past quarter we were seeing double digits in almost all their markets especially their biggest markets and future analysts expect them to grow very strong growth numbers as well finally their balance sheet is another thing i like they have a strong balance sheet they are profitable right now and they have cash flow from operations that are also positive what i don't like i i can't say there's anything i don't like right now um the biggest risk that i would say though is a lot of software companies are a bit overextended right now um so if they if that pull down that's happened i do believe autodesk might take a hit but as a long-term investment and a dollar cost average that's not a play that's not something i'm truly truly afraid of and that's one of the main reasons i ended up buying autodesk i believe it's a great investment right now and one that i've been adding for the past few months and just trying to build my exposure here 
The second company we're going to take a look at is a one in the food industry, and this is Tattoo Chef, ticker TTCF. But before we go any further, go down and you guys should see a link to 7 Investing, where every month they recommend 7 stocks for $17 a month. But if you use my link and my promo code JOSE, you get the first $10 off on, on the first purchase you make. May I say, yes, this is an affiliate program, but I use their services and would recommend it to anyone. All right, so now let's go back to Tattoo Chef. Right now, After Hours is sitting at $17.21. It has a market cap of $1.14 billion. So this is a very, this is a small cap company right now. Um, year to date, I'm going to do year to date since this was a, a SPAC merger. I'm going to do when the merger actually took place. So the merger actually took place on October 15th. So since then, it has actually lost about 27.3% of its value. Just like we're seeing pretty much with most SPAC right now, it's just once the merger is complete, all the hype kind of dies down and we see more some of a, a pull down. And it is down right now about 30% from its all-time highs. Its all-time highs were around October 16, 17. Obviously, I do believe if we look at before the merger actually happened, um, and all that hype occurred, the stock price is down more like 40% from its all-time highs. So I do believe I am getting in at a great price. So let's take a quick look at what Tattoo Chef does. So Tattoo Chef is another plant-based company very similar to Beyond Meat. And But the major difference between this is where Beyond Meat kind of sells you like raw patties for you to make. Here they, show, they sell you uh, already made food dishes and you and food dishes right so it's you just pretty much either put them on to bake through the microwave or in the oven wherever you want to cook these new meals a few things you they just recently opened up an online store and they're actually in a lot of big stores right now right now you can find them for example in walmart you can find them in sam's club which is also owned by walmart and unfortunately i did not see it here in this range where i was looking at i guess there's no costcos within this zip code that i put but they are also in Costco and these are three big stores right now. So now let's take a quick look at their at their most recent earnings. And unfortunately, and some, um, let me not say unfortunately, this is a company that's very new. So there's not a lot of analysts looking at it. So we have to really much look at the past data. And usually when analysts are not looking at it, it's sometimes a hidden gem because there's no analysts going on. There's no price to future forward price to sales ratio, no forward PE ratio. So certain investors don't even look at them when analysts are not are, are not are not overall giving a over, overview of them. And that that's OK. Right. That means they, they prefer to follow someone else. But right now, for their most recent quarter, which ended a few which ended in September 30th and they reported, I think this week revenue was recorded at 41 million dollars. That was up. 65 percent compared to same time last year this is one of those stocks that actually reminds me a lot like celsius like i mentioned celsius is my biggest winner right now being almost a 200 percent. so that's a three bagger and that's insane how, how celsius and i can see the same energy i felt when i was reviewing celsius i feel when i'm reviewing tattoo chef it increased um so we can see revenue increased to 41 millions up 65 percent another thing is adjusted earnings are positive um and they have increased compared to same time last year now if we take a look at the full nine months like i mentioned this is quarter three so the full nine months of their fiscal 2020 is also showing great numbers revenue was up was 109 million and that's up 87 percent compared to same time last year and this is compared to 58 million same time last year so we're seeing huge growth here adjusted earnings before all these expenses right that ibita um, was 10.6 million or 9.7 percent of their total revenue compared to 4.7 million or 8.2 million of their revenue last year so we're seeing improvements um increase in revenue strong growth right super uh, a hyper growth stock this is definitely a hyper growth stock for me we're seeing also improvements on their earn a beta earnings before all those expenses in both value and margins as well so next i want to take a look at their balance sheet unfortunately if we take a look at actual numbers they are not gap profitable at the moment but that's okay as long as they have a strong balance sheet so i pulled up and try to look at their balance sheet but their balance sheet does not really show uh doesn't give hope to me um and one, then i realized something that this balance sheet 
was for the end of their quarter three, which was September 30th. But remember, there was a merger that happened uh, on October 15th. So they get this extra money from all that equity, from all that share, uh, all, all the public sale sharing. So with that, they their balance sheet has become super strong. They mentioned as of September 30th, Tattoo Chef had cash of about $3.2 million. And they had about a line of credit of $19.7 million. That was a big debt that they had uh, outstanding. Uh, so that to me was a scary, scary uh, balance sheet. But I didn't see that they had strong inventory. So they sold that inventory. And normally with food companies and, and many places like this, you usually have a huge line of inventory to kind of fund that inventory. And then that inventory just progresses and moves on. But one usually stays with that heavy line of credit, uh, outstanding line of credit. But following the completion of the merger, which was on October 15th, the company had cash and cash equivalents of $95 million, an outstanding balance of line of credit of $5 million. So after that merger, this became one of, uh, I, want, I want to say a great balance sheet, one that will be able to survive the upcoming years as they continue to grow that revenue growth and expand their market share. So now let's take a look at their charts again. What I'm looking for, if it's overextended, first thing I'm seeing, no, it is not overextended. We can see what overextended means. It's right here. Look how far it is from its averages. Now it's kind of underextended to some bit. So right now I can see we have strong volumes between these stock prices of $16 and 65 cents and about $20 and like 30 cents, right? These aren't exact prices, but this is where I see the most volume for this company. This is where a lot of investors purchase that. And that's pretty crazy, right? Cause this is probably most of the time, the stock, most of the days, the stock was sitting in this upper region. But I guess people were not buying there, but people are definitely have loaded up within these ranges. So what are the things I like? Like I mentioned, first thing is we are in strong volume area. We are not overextended. It is in a market that we saw plenty of growth right now. People are really into this plant bias. So it, it is a, a market that we're seeing strong growth. We saw 80 percent revenue growth compared to the same time last year. They have a very strong balance sheet after that merger and they have paid down a lot of their outstanding credit line which is great and they are also increasing their their non-gap earnings EBITDA adjusted EBITDA so that's also great to see what I don't like there are a few things I don't like about the company first is it is not profitable right now even though it has a strong balance sheet let's just be real and say it is not profitable right now so that's one thing I'm not a huge fan of what's another thing I don't like the only other thing is right now, yes, the plant-based industry is very popular, but for how long is it going to be popular? And that's the thing. That's why for me, when playing Tattoo Chef, this is not going to be a tier one stock for me, but I do believe it's a long a market that's going to be long for at least the next few years and it's going to give me better returns than the overall market. And if I had a little bit more conviction on this plant-based industry, this is a, a very strong company in my opinion so i would probably increase my exposure as the time progresses right now even if i, ha I was just starting off with the with the entry position i would actually go in with the full entry position and if i already had a position like i did i, I don't mind adding at these levels all right so the third company i'm going to take a look at is one of my favorite this is actually a tier one stock for me for some time it was actually one of my biggest winners and now it has become just a decent winner for me. This is Huya ticker H U Y A to all my podcast listeners. Uh, I'm pretty. I talked about this twice today, um, this week. So obviously, you had to be on my list to purchase. Right now, Huya is up four percent for the day after reporting earnings. So we can see their market price is twenty one dollars and thirty six cents, and it has a market cap of about four point seventy five billion dollars. This is a live streaming platform, like I'm going to show, but. One of its biggest known competitor, not competitor, but a company that does similar stuff is Twitch. And Twitch is here mainly in the North Americas. Twitch is valued at $15 billion. So now we have a company in China. This is an international company with biggest population, one of the biggest gaming populations as well, only sitting at 4.75 billion valuation. You can see where I definitely see the growth in this company. Year to date returns have been about 6.7% and it is right down right now down 27.8% from its all time highs. If we take a look at what they do, I pretty much just went to their website 
and we can see the type of games that they're doing so like i mentioned this is just a streaming platform very similar to youtube gaming very similar to facebook gaming very similar to twitch where you go and watch other players stream or do like a talk shows and stuff like that very similar to what i do on twitch and make sure to follow me on twitch you should see the link to that below uh, on my comments or my description i stream every sundays at 8 30 eastern time for about an hour and a half and i just answer all the questions we look at different stocks but we can see some of their top categories we see league of legends we see king of glory we see piece of elite we see crossfire we see player unknown and let me say these are games that are actually owned by tencent and tencent owns a huge portion of huya huya is also going to go a merger with doju and doji in the upcoming in the upcoming year and become a super power streaming service in china and this partnership that they have with tencent i think is the most important thing ever because tencent is one of the biggest gaming companies out there that owns these great games like league of legends player unknowns crossfires so every time they come up with a new game they give those games to twitch and allow them to stream on their servers and i believe that's pretty smart for example some of their newer games once you play them when you try to live stream your default streaming service is twitch so it's going to bring more creators and in return bring more viewers to this channel so let's take a look at the revenue breakdown on that revenue they made about 414 million dollars this most recent quarter most of it comes from live streaming so let's say you're watching me live stream and you want to send me some money Huya takes a portion of that donation you give to your live streamer that's a much lot more most live streaming companies to make money the second is advertisement advertisement makes up about five percent of total revenue and this is just what it seems if you don't pay for for who you if you don't use their paid service you get ads on when you're viewing someone and they get paid a portion of that and we can see net revenue actually grew for 30 percent compared to the same time last year so that's huge growth right anything growing over 15 percent, i consider a huge growth this grew 30 percent compared to the same time last year next thing future growth future growth for who is expected to grow 17.8 percent on average this is another hyper growth stock for me growing at crazy levels in the past and right now i did forget to mention is we are right now is gap profitable and it's also gap positive in cash flow from operations so that's great things but even within that it still has a very strong balance sheet cash and cash equivalents is more than enough to pay off its total liabilities and total liabilities not even total debt this company does not have total debt at the moment which makes it uh definitely a, a super fun stock for me to own so now let's take a look at their technicals so what are we looking again for if is it overextended right now it is not overextended the stock price is sitting around its averages it is sitting at a huge volume price within here this between low 20s and mid 20s stock price so that's where we're seeing a lot of volume coming in um, so what are some things I like? The overall market, the live streaming platform, I think is one that I'm completely bullish on. If Amazon's Twitch was an individual company, I would believe that would be my biggest holding um, by far. Just because right, content creation is going up around the world, g new games are coming out, and it doesn't matter who is the best game. All that matters is that there's a creator that's wanting to create that game that wants to do content within that game and people that want to watch it and we're seeing that in youtube with huge number of growth we're seeing it in twitch with growth we're seeing it in facebook gaming so and esports esports are using these platforms to show tournaments the growth potential in live streaming i believe is is undervalued still at the moment i also like the type of revenue growth they're seeing and the revenue growth they are expected to see the balance sheet they have is very strong and there's only one thing I don't like about Huya, and that is that it is a Chinese company. So there is that international risk. There is that risk going on right now with the tensions you know, between US and Huya. Um, so that's my biggest reasons. But how would I play it? Like I mentioned, that is a big risk. So for that, I limit my exposure to international international equities but it does not it's not going to deter me from buying international assets so how would i play it who is actually one of my biggest holdings sitting at i think five percent right now i'm going to be adding very slowly but surely to Huya. as my portfolio grows as i continue to add more money obviously that exposure is going to continue to go down and i just don't mind adding back up to contain it around that five percent but i don't think i would go any further Right now, if I was in an entry position, I wouldn't mind entering with a 
will entry precision. And if I already had a decent exposure, I wouldn't mind adding on to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Like always, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. It helps the channel out so much. And let me know in the comments below, what are some of your favorite? Did you like any of these three stocks? Take care. Have a good night and see you next time.